30 starts right now. We begin tonight with a developing story. A robbery attempt resulted in a clerk shooting a suspect. That suspect now in the hospital. Now this all happened at a smoke shop near Ingram and Culebra Roads. Our Alyssa Cole joins us live from that shopping center. Alyssa, what are police telling you? Yeah, that's right. It's still a pretty active scene here at the Crown Metals Shopping Center. And after speaking with police, we're going to share the details that we know. Now, police tells us a male walked into the smoke and vape shop around 430, hopped over the counter as as if he was going to attempt to rob the store. That's when police say the employee in the store got in defense and shot the suspect at least twice. The suspect then ran off, making it across the street behind another store in the area. That's where police found him with multiple gunshot wounds. Now, he has been transported to the university hospital where he is said to be in serious condition. And police tells us the employee has no physical injuries, but he'll also be transported to the hospital for a health screening. Now, right now, we are working to find out the identification of that suspect as far as his name and his age. And of course, if he brought a weapon to this area. In San Antonio, Alyssa Cole, Case at 12 News. Thank you, Alyssa. In other news, we're still waiting to learn the identity of a man shot and killed by San Antonio police today. The incident started when police were called to a home on the west side after the family of the suspect told police he had several outstanding warrants. The family was able to give police a description of the man. Police believe they found him riding a bike in the area. According to Police Chief William McManus, when the officers attempted to stop the man, he began to fight them. The man then allegedly pushed the officers away and claimed he had a gun and was going to shoot. The chief says body camera footage showed the man reaching for his waistband before an SAPD officer fired three shots at him. He was pronounced dead at the scene. Another shooting leaves two people in critical condition while two more are questioned by police. Officers were called to the scene just before 11 a.m. on Noblewood Drive near East Houston Street and I-10. When officers arrived there, they found two people with gunshot wounds inside of a car. Both victims taken to a hospital. Police believe the shooting may have started at a nearby gas station and then ended at that location. They also say the vehicle the two victims were in was reported stolen. San Antonio police say it was a drug deal that left one person hospitalized in a neighbor covered in more than a neighborhood rather covered in more than 100 bullet casings. The shots were heard just after 1130 last night near the intersection of Comorant and Water's Edge drives. Police say six people showed up for the alleged drug deal. Something went wrong and they began firing at each other down the road. One man was shot in the back several times and was taken to the hospital. Tonight on the night beat, we speak with the neighbor who describes what he heard just two houses down. An eight-year-old boy is recovering in the hospital tonight after being shot while playing video games in his own room. That shooting happened just after five o'clock this morning at a home on Halley Spirit near Ray Ellison Boulevard and Loop 410. Now, the, pol pol the boy told police he was upstairs in his room when someone started shooting at the home. Police say he was hit in his left shin and taken to the hospital. That boy is expected to survive his injuries. Police, meanwhile, still looking for a suspect. The number of migrant apprehensions is on track to surpass 2 million this fiscal year. That's according to data from Customs and Border Protection. Some Republican governors have begun sending these migrants to sanctuary cities without any planning or warning to other lawmakers. This morning, an El Paso-sponsored bus carrying asylum seekers arrived in New York City. One day earlier, a bus sent by Texas Governor Greg Abbott arrived at the Vice President Kamala Harris's residence carrying another 50 migrants. Immigration lawyers are still dealing with the fallout after Florida Governor Ron DeSantis flew two planes worth of about 50 migrants to Martha's Vineyard on Thursday. It's un-American, it's reckless, and we have a process in place to manage migrants at the border. It's only when you have 50 illegal aliens end up in a very wealthy, rich sanctuary enclave that he decides to scramble on this. To be clear, these are migrants or asylum seekers who have been processed by immigration authorities. Still ahead on the news at 530, the countdown to the funeral service for Queen Elizabeth is underway as the last of the public pays their respects. How the president and first lady are doing the same. Destroyed buildings and dozens left to be rescued will tell you how big of an earthquake left parts of Taiwan with this much damage.
We turn now to Britain's final farewell to Queen Elizabeth II. The 10 days of public mourning now coming to an end. The funeral procession will begin tomorrow morning. About 500 heads of state and dignitaries from around the world are expected to attend. President Biden and First Lady Dr. Jill Biden have already touched down. ABC's Faith Abube is in London with the latest. Tonight, mourners inside Westminster Hall watching a changing of the guard. <laughs> Queen Elizabeth's grandchildren, including Prince William and Prince Harry, holding a 15-minute vigil beside the Queen's coffin. It was amazing because I've never seen the royal family before. Queen consort Camilla also paying tribute to her late mother-in-law. She's got those wonderful blue eyes that when she smiles, you know, they light up her whole face. I'll always remember that smile. You know, that smile is unforgettable. Soccer fans and players honoring Queen Elizabeth's memory with a moment of silence. Earlier, a royal surprise for mourners outside Westminster Hall. <laughs> Prince William and his father, the King, stopping by unexpectedly to thank them for their support. Authorities in London beginning a countdown to determine when to stop allowing new mourners to join the incredibly long line to bid farewell to Queen Elizabeth. The line for those with disabilities already permanently closed. Officials trying to make sure those already in the queue can make it into Westminster Hall before the four days of public viewing ends Monday. It's history and it's, it's the Queen and you don't get the opportunity again, do you? It's come Monday, the opportunity's gone. So we just had to come. Officials now warning of another night of cold temperatures. Overnight, the wait to see the Queen at times stretching up to 24 hours. It was just amazing. I thought it was worth the 14 hours. The pain to walk all the way. She did a lot of things for this country, so it was only right for me to come and pay the respect. Others started camping out on sidewalks on Friday for the funeral on Monday. And some of these people came prepared with sleeping bags, blankets, and all the snacks they need. And we've got two more nights, and here we are in our chairs with our sleeping bags and, and Paddy Bear. President Biden and First Lady Jill Biden now in London, ahead of a state reception planned for world leaders at Buckingham Palace tomorrow. Faith Abube, ABC News, London. Parts of Taiwan dealing with the aftermath of a 6.9 magnitude earthquake today. Take a look at that. It caused buildings to collapse and temporarily triggered tsunami warnings in the area. The quake had a depth of 10,000 meters. Four people had to be rescued after being trapped under the rubble of a building. And about 20 passengers were evacuated after a train derailed as a result of the quake. As of right now, no fatalities have been reported, just an awful lot of damage. Pretty scary stuff out that way. All right, back here at home, taking a look outside with live cam here heading into this Sunday evening. Temperature at about 93 degrees here in San Antonio. We had some more clouds out there earlier this morning, but that is definitely scattered out and broken up just a little bit more, leading way to more sunshine. Because of that, though, temperatures have really been able to crank up. We've been able to climb into the 90s. We'll show you those current conditions right now. Temperatures have also been uh, been pretty warmer than average for this time of year. Those heat index values in the mid to even upper 90s when you do factor in all of the humidity in place. So it is still going to be muggy if you're stepping out for any Sunday evening plans. 84 by 10, around 80 as we head into the early morning hours of our Monday. High pressure in control this week, so those hot conditions will continue. Another hot Sunday out there, pretty quiet here, but uh, the traffic's definitely heating up. Heating up for sure. Absolutely, yeah. Earlier today, what was Tropical Storm Fiona actually strengthened into Hurricane Fiona. And then earlier this afternoon, it actually did make landfall along portions of Puerto Rico. Let's show you the latest information on that hurricane. This is the latest advisory that came in from the National Hurricane Center at the 4 p.m. hour those winds at about 85 miles per hour sustained gusting upwards of 105 miles per hour. It is moving to the northwest at about nine miles per hour. Forecasters are saying that it could produce anywhere between 12 to 18 inches of rain, localized pockets of 30 inches not off the table across Puerto Rico and the eastern half of the Dominican Republic. It also did completely knock out power along the entire territory 
territory earlier this afternoon as well. It is expected to take more of a northward turn as we head into the first half of the upcoming work week. But as it turns over the warm waters of the Atlantic there, it could potentially strengthen into a major hurricane category three storm into midweek. But notice here on the latest forecast cone, the good news is as of right now, it is expected to stay east of the eastern coast of the United States. Of course, we will continue to keep eyes on that and we'll go into a further look at the tropics later on tonight on the night beat. But back here at home, most of us are quiet. A couple of showers to the west of Corpus Christi in deep south Texas because we have seen more peaks of sunshine this afternoon. Those temperatures have really been able to crank up yet again into the low to mid 90s for the majority of the area, but it is still plenty humid. Those dew points, how we measure the low level moisture in the atmosphere in the 60s, a couple of 70s, the farther south that you go. So those heat index values have been able to climb into the mid to upper 90s and even a few low triple digits out there today still is going to be warm and muggy. If you're stepping out for any Sunday evening plans, temperatures falling into the 80s shortly after dinner time. Not a whole lot going on across the Lone Star State, minus a few showers closer to the coastal regions. That is thanks though, thanks to high pressure that is in control and that's really going to stick with us as we head into the upcoming work week, which means those temperatures will continue to sit on the elevated side. So here's your Monday morning, low to mid 70s for most, maybe a few upper 60s across portions of the hill country. It is still going to be plenty muggy, very similar to what we found out there earlier this morning. A little bit more cloud cover works its way in through the overnight as well into the afternoon. Again, very similar to what we found this afternoon. That cloud cover does break up a bit more, leading way to more sunshine. Those temperatures once again climb into the low to mid 90s. But of course, with that humidity in place, it will likely feel more like the upper 90s in a few more triple digits at times. KSAT 12 hour forecast throughout the first day of the work week, upper 80s as we head into the early afternoon hours. Here in San Antonio, a forecast high around 95, a 10% chance for a very isolated shower. I think it's possible we find a few more splashes of rain closer to the coast. More of us than not will stay quiet into the work week thanks to that high pressure. Really more of the same conditions into our Tuesday and Wednesday, but through the second half of the work week, we see a little bit more drier air trying to mix in, which is good for the mornings. Those temperatures cool down a little bit more efficiently in the low 70s, but on the flip side of that, that drier air is also able to warm up pretty quickly. So the first day of fall on Thursday, not really feeling like fall. Current forecast high around 98 degrees. Gaza. That's why we call it fake fall. Yeah, but wouldn't it be exactly. fun to break that 100 degree temperature streak? We're one day away. On the first day of one fall. One day away. That would be fun. It's not going to happen, Tim. I'm going to hold out hope. <laughs> I'm going to be positive. <laughs> All right, Andrew, the Roadrunner is headed up to Austin looking for an upset. The best they were able to do is create some upset, upset stomachs for uh, Longhorn fans. At, at least for Courtney, yeah. Uh, the Roadrunners definitely just did prove that they belonged. Really, head coach Jeff Trailer is not one for moral victories, but the point is the Roadrunners did play well. When we come back, Greg Simmons was on hand at the game, and he'll have more on the turning point of that game. Plus, the Aggies had a new quarterback who got his first win, but how did he play? Got that too. Next. out backwards pass is he gonna throw he is he's looking for franklin it's floating he makes the catch how did he do that utsa yeah we don't know what's going on either yeah! Yeah! guess who it is first four Kelvin Johnson was fired up after UTSA opened up a 17-7 lead on the Longhorns in Austin last night in Big Board Sports. Now that was a moment Roadrunner fans won't soon forget. UTSA stunned number 21 Texas and their fans in Austin by scoring two touchdowns in quick succession, thanks in part to a successful onside kick. The Roadrunners announced loudly that they weren't scared of the raucous environment, but from that point forward, the Longhorns wrestled back control of the game thanks to running back Bijan Robinson, who rushed for 183 yards, and a Texas defense that held UTSA to just three points over the final 39 minutes of regulation. KSAT 12's Greg Simmons was on hand at Royal Memorial Stadium, and he has more. 
The UTSA Roadrunners have got to be impressed with the fact they were able to hang with the Texas Longhorns in front of over 102,500 fans for three quarters. In fact, at one time, led by 10 points within four, which is 18 seconds left in the third quarter when the 44-yard interception return for a touchdown occurred. That was the turning point of the game. It was just a bad pass by me. I take all responsibility for that. I definitely think that was a game changer right there. Um, I got to just make that throw. I make that throw 10 times out of 10. I don't know what happened. Definitely on that. Um, and that was definitely the momentum changer. To summarize a game, yeah, that was a huge play. There's no doubt. But there's so many other ones. Right? How many times have you seen our kids come back from 11 before? I mean, we went right back down there. And we didn't get it in. And uh, who knows? We might have had one more onside kick coming. So I don't want to be Mr. Moral Victory because I really believe my kids come in here and win. And, and I just think the moment we don't all believe that in this room, we have no chance. The first half and early on, um, you know, really shows that we can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with whoever. Um, and ultimately it falls on us, you know, just whether we do our job or, you know, whatever whatever that may be but um you know i'm i'm proud of the way we played you're always going to appreciate these types of games you know to be able to come out here and play a big 12 opponent that's huge for our program um you know just to be able to go out there and showcase our abilities and what we're capable of um but yeah there's definitely some things that we left out there that we, that we're going to you know want back and that's what the film's for so we'll get it corrected and make sure it doesn't happen again the texas longhorns will now begin conference play next week when they face texas tech in lubbock and for the utsa roadrunners they return home in the alamo dome to host texan southern at 2.30. With the Roadrunners in Austin, Greg Simmons, KSAT 12 Sports. All right, thanks a lot, Greg. UIW continues to prove they're a top 10 team in the FCS with a 31-14 road victory over Prairie View A&M yesterday night. Quarterback Lindsey Scott was clinical, completing 32 passes for 272 yards and three touchdowns. Head coach G.J. Kinney is now 3-0 since taking over the program. That's the best start for any first-year head coach in Cardinals history. And UIW will open up Southland Conference play against Southeastern Louisiana next week. Texas A&M got a much needed bounce back winning as number 13 Miami at home last night, 17 to nine. The Aggies turned to junior quarterback Max Johnson, a transfer from LSU to lead the offense. And for the most part, he delivered. Johnson's stat line doesn't jump off the page. He completed 10 of 20 passes for 140 yards and a touchdown, but he also rushed seven times for 23 yards. The most important thing though, is the end result. How did Johnson feel winning his first home game as the Aggies starting QB? Freaking awesome. Uh, I love playing with these guys, um, you know, going to practice every day and, you know, coming out here, um, you know, getting a win over a, a top 15 team is pretty incredible. Um, you know, uh, shout out to the to the O-line and to the defense for, you know, playing great tonight. The Aggies moved back up one spot in the latest AP Top 25 poll to 23rd in the country. They'll next face Arkansas in Jerry World next Saturday at 6 p.m. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. And speaking of Jerry World, the Cowboys are hosting the Bengals this afternoon with Cooper Rush starting at quarterback. Dallas currently leads this one 17 to 9 in the fourth quarter. And the Texans are in Denver taking on the Broncos. They're up 9 to 6 in a weather delayed game in the third quarter. We'll have highlights and reaction from both of these games tonight on instant replay after the night beat. He's still on the Well, you just heard it. Congrats to Jesse Bam Rodriguez for defeating Israel Gonzalez via unanimous decision last night to defend his WBC Super Flyweight title. Bam is now 16-0 with 11 knockouts in his career, and this is his third victory in the ring this year. He's not the only one finding success from this area. If you guys remember Becky Hammond from the Spurs, well, she just led the Aces today, about an hour ago, to their first WNBA title in her first season as head coach. So congratulations to her. Congrats to Becky. Thank you so much. We'll be right back. Still plenty hot out there as we approach the 6 p.m. hour. 92 feeling like 94 over at the airport. It feels like 99 still up in Canyon Lake. 96 is that feels like temperature out in Hondo. The seven day forecast throughout the remainder of this week. Still plenty hot building heat actually as we head into the middle of the week with those temperatures uh, potentially a few degrees shy of that century mark. Fall in San Antonio where it means absolutely nothing. <laughs> That's all of our time for now. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back here for the night beat tonight at 10. Have a great evening. See you then.